All right, so I'm actually doing this in my car because it is snowing like crazy outside and I want to stay warm and dry. And I also am not excited about the thought of going into a coffee shop and talking to myself essentially while everybody else looks on. So this was the sketchbook that I used for my 31 days of self portraits. Um, I made it last winter. Um, I was learning the Coptic stitch, um, which means that the sketchbook lies flat, which I really enjoy. Um, and I also like a hard cover to my sketchbook. So then when it is lying flat, if I set it on my lap or something, um, the pages don't bend super much. So I really like this. Um, the cover is just made out of cardboard. It was the back of a, um, it was the back cardboard of a watercolor um, notepad, a watercolor notepad. So I just cut that in half. Um, and then these were just various types of paper that I um, folded into signatures. And then as you can see, I stitched them together. Um, the tutorial I used for the Coptic stitch was by C Lemon, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, it was a really easy to follow tutorial. Anyway, so this is the sketchbook that I used. There's other stuff in here. I mean, I have just m places where I've been messing around, places where I've been doing swatches for different ink samples um, that I ordered, you know, standard unicorn fare and my self-portraits. So I have added to these a little bit since I began, um, but this was day one. You can see I was doing some ink sample swatching and I did the ink samples actually after I did the portraits. I wasn't sure where this experiment was gonna go. It was something that I felt inspired to try and I didn't really have an agenda. I was simply curious about, um, you know, trying different techniques, trying different materials, um, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And I wanted to do something different every day. I didn't want all of the portraits to look the same. Uh, I also was very, for whatever reason, I was very adamant about the need to take a different selfie every day because I didn't want to draw myself in the best light, not saying that I'm drawing myself in a bad light by any means, but I didn't want to only draw glamour shots of myself. You know, I didn't want to make myself into this idealized version. No, which sometimes we do if you're going to go out or um, you're dressing up um, and you do for whatever reason want to finesse uh, your appearance, that's fine. Um, however, what I was really curious about personally was the day-to-day -day me, right? Because life isn't only those glorified moments, life is our day-to-day -day experience. So I wanted to draw myself in my day-to-day -day experience, which means sometimes my hair was messy, sometimes it was up, you know, in a ponytail, sometimes um, I was just out of the shower or whatever. Um, I wanted to take a different reference photo every morning and just see what happened. So <laughs> I became very acquainted with the real and unfiltered me, uh, which is what I set out to do. Um, even today, I mean, I'm not really dressed up. I, I am freshly showered, so my hair, my thin hair is kind of, it's still kind of drying. It's not totally dry yet. Anyway, I don't have any makeup on. Um, I do like my darker framed glasses because, uh, I feel like it frames my eyes better. Otherwise I have blonde eyebrows and eyelashes and, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's fine, but, uh, I really enjoy my glasses because they do frame my eyes. So anyway, this was day one. Uh, it was just ink and watercolor. I just sat down with a Sharpie pen and did a quick sketch and then added some watercolor and that was it. There was no other thinking to it. Uh, this was day two. Um, as I mentioned, I've been buying these ink samples. Uh, there's a website called gouletpens.com and I've used watercolor for quite a while now. And so I've been wanting to branch into inks and the idea of maybe working with a limited palette of inks and how they mix together. Uh, but first I wanted to see kind of the variation uh, between putting the ink down straight from the vial and uh, significantly dilating it with water. So I could see the variation that's possible uh, with uh, some of the inks. You can see I've starred some that were my favorites. This, um, what is it, Dragon's Napalm. Noodlers is the brand and Dragon's Napalm. I really love the color and I love the variation between full strength um, and diluted. Anyway, getting away from the self-portrait um, 
focus. So this was day two. Uh, I was using a dip pen and some of these inks and then just added some colored pencil on top. Uh, and these do flip around just because, you know, I wanted to be comfortable. I didn't want to be forcing myself to create in a way that was uncomfortable for me. And sometimes I really like drawing this way. Sometimes I really like drawing this way or this way. So that's why it varies. Um, so this was just colored pencil. I sat down with a colored pencil, started sketching, and then just kept going. Uh, I did add this kind of ink wash later because I was playing around again with these ink samples. And I just felt like it would be a nice compliment to the portrait. Uh, and then this was day four. There's bleed through now because after the fact, I added some alcohol marker to day five's portrait. Uh, but anyway, you know, this went okay. I went, sat down and I was trying to, my intention was to take a little bit longer, to be a little bit um, more curious about adding more layers. And so there's a lot of layers of gouache here. Um, the hair, I just kind of, <laughs> I was over it. Usually by the time I get to the hair, I'm just kind of over it. Um, I don't have a lot of interest in drawing hair. So I just wanted to finish it. And you know, one of my eyes is a little too small and a little skewed, but these are all things that if I sat down with the intention of doing a professional piece, of course I would, you know, have everything um, proportional before I began. But again, these, I, I do work. <laughs> um, I, you know, have a child and dogs and I don't have any help or anything um, income wise or, um, you know, childcare wise. My son is old enough now that childcare isn't a huge, huge, huge issue. Sometimes he stays home by himself while I come into town because he doesn't want to go grocery shopping or whatever. But anyway, um, because I do have a lot of responsibility and I have my own kind of entrepreneurial venture. So uh, I don't have <laughs> many, many hours every day to sit and make something that's perfect. And I'm not getting paid for it. So I'm not really motivated to do that anyway, because it doesn't interest me in the first place. Anyway, here's uh, day five. Again, you can see I was messing around with some more ink samples after the fact. And uh, the pink and the purple around my self-portrait, uh, I added after the fact. The thing I love about sketchbooks is I go back sometimes afterwards and, you know, add something to the background or, or maybe change things a little bit. And I love that a sketchbook is a place where things can evolve. Uh, so this was day six, uh, watercolor, just watercolor. I think I did a little sketch underneath. It looks like a graphite sketch underneath. And then I just added some watercolor. Um, I was working on not needing to be so bold because most of the things I do are really bold and really colorful and really graphic. Um, graphic not meaning um, lewd or anything like that, but in a graphic form. Uh, this was just graphite, and then when I was done with the graphite sketch, again, the hair was, honestly, the hair was left like that. <laughs> I could say it was a stylistic choice, which it was, but it was also a stylistic choice because by the time I was done with my face, I was running out of time, and I kind of got bored, and I was like, what can I do to make it look more finished without having to spend hours and hours and hours finishing it? So anyway, I really love this one. I do love gouache, and I love the bold graphic, um fields of color uh, in general. And so I did that. And then I felt like adding the gouache to my glasses would be um, fun as well. Uh, and then this, so that was day seven. Did we do day six? We did. We did. How did I? Oh, I guess somehow I jumped ahead with the, um, anyway, where am I? No, I showed you those. All right. <laughs> so this is another one. And this was drawn from a photo, which um, turns out was selected by uh, France Van Stone, who is a uh, portrait artist. She does some urban sketching. She draws a lot of um, things in ballpoint pen and graphite. Anyway, um, through the Sketchy app, she chose my this the photo that I used for this reference and has um, used my face as a demo for her latest course on drawing a three quarter of you different drawing different perspectives of the face whether it's tilted up or turned to the side etc so anyway I did this before that happened um, just a colored pencil sketch in purple and then I decided again to play around with some of these ink samples and just do some ink washes over the top I like how it turned out I am um, glad I didn't spend too much time you know overworking my knit hat trying to draw the knit and the same thing with the hair I mean you can tell like 
hair, hair just kind of bores me. <laughs> it just bores me. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this was day nine. This one was day nine. Um, I was going in there with ballpoint pen. And then again, the hair, I was like, all right, I am, I need to get to work. I've spent too much time on the face already. So I just kind of scribbled in the hair and then I add colored, added kind of colored pencil, um, afterwards just to give it a little bit more warmth. Um, but I really enjoy the thing I love about ballpoint pen is it's very meditative because you have to start out with really, really light marks and you just pretty much endlessly layer light light, light layers of ballpoint pen to build up the tones. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, and you can kind of get lost in it. Like I was, I think I was listening to, um, I listened to a lot of educational stuff on, you know, energy work or, uh, entrepreneurship, um, et cetera. And so I was listening to, I think some recorded calls while I was doing that. This was gouache again. I, I just really love the texture of gouache and I was pushing myself because, uh, traditionally I do just do kind of bold fields of color, like with my unicorn artwork, um, for that other portrait that you saw. And for this one, you know, I didn't want to get too realistic, but I did want to play around a little bit with, um, form a little bit. So, and again, you know, I'm not taking all day on these. These are meant to be they were meant to be quick enough so that I could complete the challenge without being overly burdened or you know, having to stay up all night um, and then not be refreshed for the next day. So anyway, I really like this one. I also love my, um, my cat headphones, which are right here. And I turn these on. I always forget, see? They, have different co they actually have different colors of lights. But these are my cat headphones, so... <laughs> I love it. I love them. Um, I can't, I couldn't go running or anything with them because they're a little bit top heavy, but, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I love wearing them. So I do wear them and I wear them out in public. Uh, this was day 11. This, in this one, I think I look a lot like my sister. Um, uh, my sister's two and a half years younger than I am and she's awesome. And, uh, someone else made a comment. One of my relatives made a comment that, uh, as we're getting older, we're looking more and more and more alike. So, um, growing up, I was always kind of the short, stocky brunette and she was the tall, thin blonde. So <laughs> there was a little bit of rivalry there, a little bit of, you know, competitiveness, but we are good friends now. Um, this was just a dip pen with the outline. You can see some colored pencil sketch underneath. And then again, I was using the inks and I didn't want to get too complicated with them. So I just kind of you know, sloppily dabbed them in there, but I really like the effect of this. This was day 12, um, just graphite with a pencil. I really wanted to explore um, the different angles of my face because hmm, you can see how it changes a lot depending on the way I tilt it. So, you know, the perspective isn't spot on. It got a little bit rushed. Um, cause I, again, I was kind of running out of time and I had some stuff that I needed to get done. Uh, this one is actually one of my favorites because it is so delicate and I don't tend to create delicate artwork. Again, I just have a preference for bold, bright colors and bright lines and, um, yeah, that more graphic feel. So I really love, I started out with a red colored pencil, some shade of red, and then was just playing around with some loose watercolor on top. And I really love the way that turned out, to be honest. Um, that is one of my favorites, I think. Um, this one's another favorite because uh, I just like how serious my expression is. And I didn't mean to make myself look so serious. I think I was just in the reference photo. I was, um, just not smiling, I think, <laughs> but I wasn't being intentionally like serious. Um, but I like it because I don't have any harsh lines in there. I mean, other than the, the sketch, colored pencil sketch you can see underneath. Um, and I just love how kind of loose it feels. And I think this was, was it while I was at the hot springs or when I was back from the hot springs and my hair was kind of, you know, stringy. Because when I lay down in the hot springs, my hair gets stringy. So it was a little bit, you know, stringy and my hat was probably frosted with ice or snow. I just really like um, that 
expression than this was. This is <laughs> how I turn things, depending on how I feel that day. Um, this one I've since added the ink wash. The original drawing was just the graphite on the back. And again, I mean, this took me like two seconds to add the ink, but I've really been having fun with um, swatching out these inks. You can see this is what I did at Draw Ink Love the other night. Um, the top and the bottom were inks. The middle was gouache, but anyway. Um, I've just been having a lot of fun playing around. So this was just graphite. I think I used a black wing pencil. I don't know if it's the 601 or 602 or which one it is. It's the black one. Um, and it's a very soft lead. So, you know, you can get darker marks with it. But I, I actually like that one too. Um, again, with the hair, I mean, I could just say it's my style. And the reason it's my style is because I have no patience for hair. <laughs> no patience. I have no patience for this hair either, but, um, uh, so let's see, 16. So here we've got 16, day 16, and this was just layers of, uh, colored pencil that I was kind of working on the same way I do with ballpoint pen with the really light hatching. I was working on really light layers of hatching. So you can see the back and forth lines, the straight lines, uh, kind of crisscrossed on top of each other. And I just enjoyed, I limited my palette for this. I think I used, I only used two different colored pencils. Maybe I used three different colored pencils. I think I used three different colored pencils. Um, a like pinkish and orangish and a grayish blue. Um, but that was just a fun challenge for that reason. Uh, this was day 17. And uh, I used a little colored pencil underneath, I think think or maybe I jumped right in with pen maybe I jumped it looks like I jumped right in with pen um, I used a dip pen and then I used different colored inks to kind of hatch in over there um, and that's another fun one I mean it's super simple what I love about making things simple is that it really is a challenge to choose what you're going to um, what you're going to represent what you're actually going to put on the page and have it still you know, have that resemblance. Um, so I, I mean, I like that because there aren't a whole lot of lines. Uh, and I feel like it conveys, you know, I don't know, me, my face, um, my vibe, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, this was another favorite because of the gouache. Um, again, kind of that bold, simplistic. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I think I did a sketch beforehand and then I just painted over it. Um, I mean, if I took a little more time on it, there are things that I would probably change. Um, uh, but I, I like it overall. So you can see it's really kind of a flat, a flat medium. Um, then this was another favorite, uh, 119. So this was day 19. Um, I used a really thin micron pen. It's the 0 .005. And so similar to the ballpoint, I was making really light hatches and then was building those up. So you can see if you look close, got to get this to stay focused, um, all the different layers of kind of lines back and forth. And then the ink was just something I added at the end. Um, I kind of got bored <laughs> by the time I got to my neck. And so I was just like, I'm just going to scribble something on there and add some ink and I'm done. Um, but the cool thing is I had the ink match. So there was an under sketch with kind of a teal pencil, just a rough under sketch to give me the framework before I you know, spent too much time hatching. Cause this takes a really long time. Um, it's kind of deceptive where it looks somewhat simple. I mean, it's just lines, but it's layers and layers and layers of light, light, light lines. And that's how you build up the tone. Uh, so then we go to, that was 19. Then we go to day 20. Um, this was fun because I accidentally made myself look like Princess Leia. It was also fun because I just started with a sketch, a uh, colored pencil sketch. It's kind of a grayish, brownish maybe. Um, and then I just decided to add the watercolor on top um, just to kind of complement, supplement. And I was wearing an, uh, my shirt was off the shoulder because I had just woke, <laughs> I think I had just woken up and my hair was still in these little pigtail buns from the the night before and I just left it like that and it ended up looking pretty cool. Um, day 21. Uh, this was super fun because I just, I had bought a pack of Crayola, thin Crayola markers from the grocery store when I was grocery shopping and I just sat down and I didn't really know where I was going with it. 
Um, but I started hatching different colors on top of each other and it turned out pretty cool. I mean, I really love when you look and it's just lines, you know, and there's like greens on tops of pinks, on tops of yellows. Um, and it's not like skin tone or it's not meant to be realistic, but it's really fun. Um, this was a ballpoint pen practice that I was doing from the sketchy app. But on the other side, this was um, graphite underneath. And then I used a brush pen to choose some lines to accentuate kind of in a more comic style. Um, and then this was just a worn out paint pen that I scribbled in the background just to kind of anchor the sketch on the page. Uh, and then where are we going? Day 23. Uh, so this one was really fun. I started out hatching with gel pens and then I added some watercolor marker and then activated it with water. And then I added some watercolor on top and some white paint pen at the end, but there's just so many layers of texture. Uh, and I really like this one, even though the perspective of my glasses is off and I mean, it's not perfect. None of these are perfect. And, uh, that was kind of the point for me was to be okay with not perfect. Um, and I think a lot of times I am okay with not perfect, but where I start to get less okay with not perfect is when I'm committed to showing something or I feel like I'm going to show somebody my work works in progress. Cause all of these are pretty much works in progress. Right. And I would have people criticize me and like, Oh, that's not good. Or, you know, ah, I don't really like that one. That could have been better or whatever. And yeah, sure. It could have been, that wasn't my intention. My intention is to show the process, um, to show experimentation and to be an example of someone who's curious and playful and discovering new things because I'm allowing myself to be curious and playful. Um, there's so many cool discoveries that I made and that I notice each time I flip back through these and those kind of discoveries wouldn't be possible if I just stayed in my comfort zone. If I use the same materials, if I started the same way every time, um, if I didn't say, Hey, I'm not going to sketch beforehand. I'm just going to go right in with pen and whatever marks I put down, I'm stuck with. Um, and I have to work with to me, that kind of problem solving really, um, stimulates my creativity. Um, and so perfect or not, <laughs> Um, I really feel like I gained a lot from this uh, experience. Experiment. Experiment. Uh, this is day 24. Uh, what did I use on that? Oh, I used this water, um, water-soluble graphite sticks. They're so yummy to use. Um, I love the texture when you put them down. And then when you put water on top, wherever you choose to add water, they get all like smooshy and smeary and creamy. It's really fun. Um, and then I used some... Karan Dash Neo Color 2 pastels, which are just water soluble crayons. Um, they're a high quality crayon, and I really love um, using them and then activating them with water. So that's kind of a lot of stuff mushed together. I love mushing stuff together. I just think it's so fun. Uh, 25. Uh, this was another fun one with gouache. Um, just kind of like lots of different layers. And I was um, kind of sticking. I think I was, I was using a square brush. I'm in my car and of course I have a brush. Um, this is an angled brush. I don't remember if I was using an angled brush or if it was squared off at the top, but I was using one of these as opposed to like fine brushes for details. And I was just kind of working on, you know, just making marks, um, kind of dabbing when I needed lines as opposed to, um, you know, trying to be really precise. So that was part of this exercise. And then just the color. Um, I mean, again, I could have spent a lot more time on this, but I think I'd already spent quite a bit of time and I had a lot that I needed to do still before um, the day. This this day I was in Aspen. Um, Oren was sick and I had made him try to go to ski class because he had ski class Saturday and Sunday this week, that weekend. He'd been sick since Wednesday. Um, and part of me was like, oh, please, you've got to be feeling better by now. Um, so I made him give it a shot. And I told him, you know, if you're not feeling well, have them call me and I'll come and get you. Well, an hour into class. So then I dropped him off at Aspen Highlands for his ski lesson. I went to Aspen, got all comfy in a coffee shop, <laughs> found a seat next to a cute little old pug whose tongue was hanging out one side. I think he was missing an eye and his tongue was hanging out on the side. And he was the sweetest little guy. So I sat down next to him and was petting him um, and started in on this sketch with a red, it was a, 
thin gel pen. You can tell, you know, we're, get, I was focusing on the face, hair kind of neglected. Plus I ran out of time because they called me and they said, oh my God, you have to come pick him up. He's dizzy and he's not doing well. So, um, that was kind of aborted and I just, I mean, I haven't come back to it. It was a fun exercise. I was ha practicing hatching just in one direction. So it's interesting to me, the feel that you get from just like just straight up and down lines, um, even in the hair. I mean, I use some lines to kind of give me the outline and then, um, I don't know. It's just interesting to me, the effect that that gives, um, day 27. So here, uh, this was gouache again. You can see it's kind of patchy because I started out mixing one color for the skin tone and then I ran out of it. Uh, I don't like to waste my gouache because it is pretty priced. I use good quality gouache. Um, cause I've used the crappy stuff like Arteza is a brand of crappy stuff. Um, and it just ruins the whole experience for me cause it's patchy and it doesn't have the coverage and, um, yeah, I just, you're supposed to be able to add water to gouache. And if you add any water to the Arteza gouache, it gets really nasty. So anyway, I was using my good gouache and I was feeling miserly when it came to my usage. So I didn't mix enough. And then I had to try to mix some more and just, <laughs> it's a little patchy. And I love the effect, even though, you know, there's not perspective, like my neck doesn't have dimension or anything, but I kind of did that on purpose because I really love the flat look and feel. Same thing with my hair. Um, I really love it when it's flat and I love rainbows. So, uh, this was day 28 and, um, this was, did I do a, I did a little sketch with kind of pink colored pencil underneath. And then I tried to be minimal with my lines. Um, I think I was just using a fine liner, not a dip pen. It looks like a fine liner to me. Um, and then again, I wanted to be kind of more delicate than I usually am and uh, allow it to be lit, lit up. Um, it feels pretty lit up to me. Um, and then I just added a little bit of colored pencil, pink colored pencil here and there. Um, there's some just random lines and scribbles in there. But I, I like the way this one turned out too. I like... It has a more ethereal nature than most of my work does. Um, this one, I just had these random uh, pages in my sketchbook. The black watercolor here was actually me playing with black watercolor, taking a photo and making my own brushes and Procreate on my iPad. So I was playing with that. And then I just had this random black splotch on this page. Then I put some ink on top of it, was playing with inks on this one. Uh, and then I just went in this day on the 29th and I drew, I didn't even do a sketch. So I just took my brush pen, my fountain brush pen. I love these brush pens, um, and, uh, drew it. And then I just took another ink cause I wanted the portrait to stand out from the page and just washed it around it, added it to my eyes and lips. And that was it. Um, we're almost done. These were just some sketchy portraits. I actually really like this one. This was just some other random girl. Um, they're just all in the sketchbook. This, I did not show anybody. I started messing around with this one and then I just hate, I hated it. I started out with crayon, uh, with the water soluble crayons. And then I took an alcohol marker and was just starting to fill in the shadows. And then I just, I hated it. So this was going to be the 29th. And then I never showed you, but now I'm showing you. So now you know that was the one time that I edited myself. Or was that the 29th? No, wait, that was the 20. Oh no, that was the 29th and that was a failed 29th. Um, this was the 30th. Again, you know, my proportions are a little off. My eyes a little too small and high now that I am done with it. But I was um, trying to be minimal to not have big, bold black lines um, to rely a little bit more on just blotches of color. Um, my hat actually looks like a cloud um, kind of like a cotton ball. So, I mean, I guess that's accurate. Again, I just, I had no patience for spending more time on this portrait. So I did the minimum on the hat. Uh, and then this was day 31 where I did do a little sketch underneath. Um, I brought my Crayola markers out again and my intention was to, um, stay pretty minimal to not go into a whole bunch of detail, but I did draw some lines that I felt cause I did scrunch my face up. I needed to convey the scrunchiness, you know, the, the wrinkles, my, my skin wrinkle like that. Anyway, so that was day 31. Um, you know, I've got other stuff in this sketchbook, not really important. Um, lots of more like ink swatches, 
I'm deciding, you know, if there are bottles of ink that I want to buy a whole bottle. I've just been doing a lot of playing around with that kind of stuff. So this um, includes my 31 Days of Self Portraits. Um, it was really interesting. And I really came to appreciate my features more. I think I've just always been aware that I'm weird and different and I don't look like other people. And it's not that I've really been ashamed of that. It's been more so... I've just kind of accepted it as a fact, um, as like, I'm just not, I'm not traditionally beautiful. I think, um, I have more of a unique beauty and it's, you really have to be willing to look for the beauty in order to see it, um, and appreciate it. And a lot of people just aren't willing to do that. Um, a lot of people are expecting, to see a certain thing and label it as beauty. And if it doesn't fit that mold, they just don't take the time to appreciate the uniqueness and appreciate um, the form. And it's been really cool for me because as part of this, I was posting my daily self-portraits on the Sketchy app, which is an app that I use a lot for photo references. People upload their photos, you're allowed to use them. So there's no copyright infringement or licensing or anything like that that's um, in the gray legal area. And um, cause they're by uploading your photos, you are giving consent, not for people to monetize them necessarily. I don't think that's in there, but um, for people to use them and draw them. So I've been posting them to sketchy and then people were seeing them. And then other people started drawing my face and complimenting me on um, you know, the angles or the prominence of certain features or, oh, your face is really fun to draw. Or, I really love drawing your nose. or I really, really love drawing your cheekbones or whatever it was. Um, and so that, not that I need external validation, but I think the fact that I took the initiative to start this project and started to appreciate my own features. And then I saw that appreciation starting to be reflected back to me, um, was a really, really cool experience. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so this was a fun experiment and I know a lot of people followed along uh, on a daily basis and I did sit down and write something kind of sparked by that portrait or by that day or whatever each day. And uh, I got a lot of great responses to my musings as well. And uh, yeah, if you are so compelled to do something similar, I highly recommend it. Uh, especially if you challenge yourself to see yourself as you really are and or step outside of your comfort zone um, and are willing to dive into a portrait or a piece of artwork not knowing how it's going to turn out. Being willing to brave the new world of uh, <laughs> techniques or time or a subject or whatever. Um, I may do another 30-day or 31-day challenge at some point. I do find that when I do a, a concerted challenge, like last year I did Mermaid, I've also done Inktober. When I've committed to doing a piece every day, I do kind of need a break after that 30 days. Like I'm not sure if I want to dive into a 100 day challenge or not, because that's, you know, I do appreciate the flexibility and variety in my life and committing to like a finished or polished or it doesn't even have to be polished, I guess, but committing to producing a certain something every single day um, can get a little stressful after a while. And the stress kind of takes over the pleasure. So I've given myself time now to just kind of mess around and not necessarily show everything that I work on. I don't usually show everything I work on because um, I've kind of been coming into my own center and creating for myself and exploring more, not with the intention of publishing or posting. Um, yeah, but I did for the 31 day challenge because I wanted to, I don't know, I guess set an example of being willing to try something new. Cause that's really when we grow the most. Um, I think it is for anyone. Um, when you grow the most is when you're willing to do something differently when you're willing to not know the outcome when you set out. And uh, yeah, it was fun. So thanks for being there. <laughs>